Excellent. On the money. We're here in Wales at WMS Firearms Training and we're going to be setting our rifles up for driven wild boar hunting. Now I'll be predominantly shooting my Sauer 404 in 338 Win Mag fitted with a Hawk Endurance 30 1 to 4 by 24 scope. And I'll be using my Plaza R8 Professional in 300 Win Mag fitted with a Hawk Frontier 30 1 to 6 by 24. In addition to that, we've got something a little bit different. A Howard 1500 and 308 Winchester with a GRS Berserk rifle stock, short and barrel, down to around 18 inches, and that's fitted with a Hawk Reflex Red Dot Sight. So that's the equipment we're going to use. We've zeroed it up on the range so that we know it's firing in the right direction. Now we've come to Andrew to show us how to put those rifles into practice, shooting driven and moving targets. So, today's in three stages. The first stage is, we're going to check the zeros. The second stage, we're going to be shooting at 50, 100, and even back to 200 meters, completely freestanding. And then we're going to move on to the running bore target, and we're going to spend the afternoon working on that. Let's go. OK, zeroing, zero checks on rifles. Most people will quite rightly check their rifle with a bipod, multiple sandbags in a position where they're basically wedged and nothing can possibly move. That's great. After you do that, it's a very good idea to check that the rifle and you are shooting to the same point of aim if you're going to be shooting freestanding. We often find people handle rifles quite differently freestanding to the way they actually do when they're on a bench. So, just for the interest of accuracy, we've got a little pad here on the front, but I'm going to hold the rifle in this sort of position. I'm not going to agonise about the shots. I'm going to imagine I'm under a little bit of pressure. I've got to squeeze the trigger fairly quickly, no mucking about and just see if this is shooting to the same point of aim for me. Steve will check the same thing out as well. This is a 300 Win Mag. It's a Blazer R8 professional success. Nice bit of kit to shoot. It's going to recoil a little bit without the moderator on. We Brits love our moderators, but that's no real problem to us today. It's also going to make a feral bang in the shed, so we've all got our ears on. Please always protect your hearing. So I'm just going to address one of the targets in the front of our quarry here. Line up, breathe in. Breathe out and make the shot. That's gone about an inch and a half high for me. I'm not using the magazine at this stage, we'll just fire two shots. The first shot could have been a fouling shot, could have been full of oil or something. Breathe out, settle. So this is sighted in for about 200 metres in reality. At 100 metres, it's just running an inch and a half to two inches high. So that's great. And Steve, no excuse mate, rifle shoots. Now I haven't fired this 404 before. I'm very familiar with the blazers. And this has got different trigger settings and I'm gonna dry fire this because this could be on one of four different trigger settings and it's vital I know which one before I go live. So, wet and clear, dry firing. It's on quite a light trigger. Very similar to the blazer. Right, magazine in. All loaded back around. Cheek on the stock, checking the eye relief. Aiming at the same place, firing. Yeah, now that one for me has gone low and right. Let's try another one. 
firing. <laughs> Same thing again. So what I'm going to do is ask Ian to shoot this just to check and see what's in the right and the wrong place because I might be shooting it differently to him. Over to you, Ian. Perfect. Next rifle on the block, we've got a Hauer 1500 here in 308, which I rate very well for rifles. Brilliant value for money. It's in a GRS Berserk stock with a shortened barrel, decent weight in the barrel, so it shouldn't recoil too much. And we've got a Hawk Reflex red dot sight with a 3MOA red dot. I'm just looking at a 10 inch disc out there and the dot cover's about a third of a disc, so that's perfect. And this is a rifle to be shot like a shotgun. And it's just a case of both eyes open, put the red dot on the target, and have a go. So white figure 11, centre chest, making the shot. That's pretty good. Give it another one. That's on the money. Another one for fun, because I love it. Headshot. I think that'll do nicely. Is that OK, Ian? <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <That'll do. laughs> We've just been shooting from a bench doing zero checks, albeit in a fairly loose and alfresco position. But the reality of a boar hunt is you're going to be on your hind legs shooting from a standing position. In my experience, any attempt to use sticks, rests or anything doesn't work. So how well can we shoot from standing? We all shoot little rifles better than we shoot big rifles. And the way to develop the right practices for shooting the big rifle well is to get the muscle memory going with little stuff when there isn't all that bang and crash and expense going on. You'll be confidently making runs up and down these plates, plicking away with a 2-2 rifle. Then we'll have a go at five plate, and this will be 10 shots in a row. Then we're going to have a go at five plates in a row with a 2 3 rifle. And then we'll start having a crack at some of the larger targets with the larger rifles. And you'll immediately see that shooting a big rifle actually isn't as comfortable as shooting a little rifle. And the little habits will start to creep in. You'll be anticipating the shot. So shoot the big rifle sparingly once you've got all of the right things happening in the right order. That's basically what we're going to do. Just for a bit of no pressure fun, I'm going to stick 10 rounds in and show you there's two different ways of going about this. Some of it may result in a hit on a plate some of it may not but let's find out okay as with the better shotgun shooting one should mount slowly but shoot reasonably quickly after the firearms in your shoulder now with a shotgun you're just looking in front of the target hopefully but with this we do have to aim so I'm gonna go for plate number one I'm gonna mount the rifle up start slightly above the target drift down into it and make the shot it shouldn't take too long Okay, and the reload in the shoulder in case it didn't go well. Good. Nine out of ten, good. Possible to beat. <laughs> Hit. Good. So this time I want you to definitely come down out between shots finger off but reloaded before you come down because that's the right muscle memory excellent good shot you willed that one to happen field target shot good right in the center Good, good shot. Okay, we've closed in the range. We're about 60 yards away here. A lot of driven boar hunting is actually happening 10, 20, 30, 40 metres, so a lot closer. We've been trying to do the hard work. We're going to do some easier work now in theory. I'm going to be nominating one of the plates for Steve to shoot. Steve's got a maximum of four seconds. In that four seconds, you can fire as many shots as you like. And we'll see how we go on the plates, okay? So, load, five, four, three, two, one. good. You can see how the 100 yard practice has helped because it's a hard thing to do, but now that we've halved the distance, oh, life's easy, isn't it? Two, four, three, two, good. 
Uh, I even broke that one as a bonus point. Okay, three, four, three, two. Right, good, good job. But do reload in the shoulder before it comes down. One, four, three, two. Good shot, that's it. That's what we're looking for. You're going to find anticipation is something that will start to creep in now because there's a lot more going on. And it's trying to clear your mind of that and go through all the basics of that lovely quiet gun mount onto target, make the shot, reload, most importantly, ready for another shot. I'll nominate one of the two targets we've been talking about. You've got two shots to make it. If you haven't made it after the second shot, A, it's gone. <laughs> okay. B, we need to reevaluate and find out what went wrong. So, who wants to crack at this first? I'll go. Far right hand figure 11, chest shot, go. And again. Good. Excellent. Excellent, on the money. Good, two good shots, we like that. Okay, back for lunch, team. Okay, guys, we have the setting sun in the west. The target's in the east, beautifully lit up. We're going to be running this at 50 metres because it's a sensible, practical, pragmatic distance. If a pig of average size is walking about 50 metres across, 90 degree angle, just aiming on the right edge of the kill zone is enough. It's plenty. If it's trotting, the base of the neck will give you the required lead at this 50 meter range. And if it's actually cantering and pretty much going for it, generally speaking on the cheek, if it's an average sized pig, or possibly with a small pig on the nose. So we're gonna start off with this at a sort of a trotting speed and then we'll build up. This system's 50 meters long. You can get multiple shots in on this and it will do from naught to about 30 kph. A flat out flying Kyla can maybe do 35 to 40 in a very short burst. Normally they're doing 15, 20, that's, that's the sort of speed. Don't swing through things, this is sustained lead. There's the animal, there's its cheek, and you sustain the lead, and when we do the practice dry firing, when you hear the click, you must still be doing the same speed at the same level, reload pretty much on target, back on, and you'll be on this thing with your first few shots, I'm confident. Right, let's give it a go. Good shoulder shot, have a go. Good, excellent, Steve. Just in front of it. Good, perfect. Good, excellent. Surprising, you don't need to. Yeah, the, the biggest mistake is aiming too far in front. Right, going back at medium speed. Off we go. Good, high shoulder. Same sort of place. Same sort of place. Oh, sorry, headshot. Good. All right, team, all this morning's work's paid off, hasn't it? This is the first of the series of high-speed runs we did. And look at it. Now, you can argue till the end of the time about whose shot is which, but basically, you've both had about 60 to 70% of shots in these remarkable little killing groups. And the odd one up and down, when well, we know there's more work and practice to do, because there always is. When you're overleading it, when you're just coming off the nose here, that's tended to lead to these odd frontal shots. The elevation grouping has been really good. If you look at this, you know, that, that's nine inches. If you look at it, we've actually got a solid killing elevation grouping through the animals. You made these groups freestanding at 50 metres on a target doing 30 kilometres per hour crossing. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? So we'll go and do some more shooting, yeah. but the signs are good. Yeah, that's brilliant. Be good. But there we go. I'll respray these and we'll get on with it. Good shoulder shot. Uh, heart shot. Same sort of place. Come forwards. And again. 
Good. Perfect. Oh. Good. Good. Two good long shots. So, how do we get on? The score's on the board. We've settled down to shooting a really good line through the pig. So you're picking up all the tips. The whole thing is about being reasonably clinical and humane with the first shot. Never be afraid not to fire at something, okay? Because something else will come along. The majority of the shooting up there has been great. You're getting the reasonably quick second shots in. And I say reasonably quick, because too quick and you know it doesn't work. Yeah. Reasonably quick is what works. And it's your duty as a hunter to be dealing with the one you first shot at and to make sure it's properly sorted before you move on. What, what I have found, uh, and for all of you guys back home who aren't used to shooting um, wild boar or moving mm. targets, this is an amazing system to go through to get those skills. Starting off from earlier on today, yeah, shooting freehand. Standing shooting, yeah. Uh, so yeah. all we're doing really is taking the, the recoil, we're taking the, the violence of the shot away, yeah. and we're just working on that, holding the rifle, bringing it onto the target, assuming there's going to be that movement, yeah. and then hitting those plates consistently. Yeah. Moving then on uh, to a 2 3 then you have a little bit of an introduction of recoil, mm -hmm. maybe a slightly dynamic in terms of the weight of the rifle. That's right. And then as you progress, you move on to the bigger calibers, which actually, rifles that we are more familiar with, yeah. by you've the done time you've done with... those first two yeah. stages, yeah. everything yeah. becomes natural. Putting those skills that you've learned with a rifle you're more familiar with, and then we start shooting. It's falling things. into place, the gears are meshing, yeah. and you, you feel it's natural. And then the next progression, yeah. bringing all that you've learned yeah. onto these moving targets. And I'd imagine if we'd have come straight out here, We'd have been all over the place. It would have been a dog dinner of a day. So I can highly recommend <laughs> to come here with Andrew if you are going to go and shoot moving targets and go through this process. You may be a great shot, you might be able to consistently group at two, three hundred yards, and all of that marksman skills, they're fabulous yep. and they have their place. But there is a completely different dynamic when it comes to shooting a, a moving target. Yep. And I feel hugely confident now yeah. to take my rifles, Good. our rifles, and our ability out into Hungary and start rolling some pigs. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Andrew, let's say thank you very much indeed. It's been a revelation. It's been thoroughly Absolutely. enjoyable. Well done, guys. Again. Yeah. Uh, and then hopefully we can now put all of that into practice when we're next shooting on a shooting cinema and then out to the field. I'm Ian Harford. And I'm Steve Wilde. And we're about to embark on our epic wild boar hunting adventure to Hungary. But before we get set up and go, we'd just like to run through the equipment that we're going to be using on this trip, give you an idea of what we're taking with us. So here's what we've got, tried tested equipment, all of this gear we've used in Alaska. It's the same stuff that we use basically every day of the year. Yeah. Just because you're going to a different country doesn't mean you need to change your equipment or your approach to it. No, it's just common sense hunting, really. It's what we use. You've got to gear yourself up for the appropriate situation, haven't you?